Well, that's it. Football Manager 23 has finally been released. The beta is over. We can finally start the Youth Academy Challenge with Juro City. If you are looking forward to this, then please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Drop a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and really gets this video out there for everyone else to see. But now, let's get into it. Juro City Youth Academy Challenge. What is going on guys and girls of YouTube today? We are back in Football Manager 23. It is the new save. The full game came out a couple of days ago. We didn't get any further with the Wolves save, unfortunately. But we're, we, we've we started the new save, the main save, the save that I wasn't going to put on the channel. I wasn't going to do any more Football Manager content after the last one. But I think I think it's it's time we did some I, I I really want to do this one uh, it's a youth academy challenge I started it I played the first season already and I was like yeah I want to put this on YouTube unfortunately as you can see in front of you I'm halfway through the season nearly and there's a there's a there's a reason why we're halfway through the season at the moment this is the earliest save file I have so with this being the earliest save file I have I can't show you everything that came beforehand. What I can show you is where we've got to now. And where we will get to by the end of the season. So, I did the holiday. I holidayed all the way till the 25th of June, 2023 or whatever it is. Yeah, 2023. And we had a couple of teams come up into the, uh, into the Bannerman National League South. We had Churro, we had Dorchester, Folkestone, Billericay. In the south and in the north, we had Nantwich, Hednesford, Nuneaton and Tamworth. I looked at these teams and I thought, which one of these teams is the most interesting to me? And I looked at Folkestone and I love the fact they called Folkestone Invicta. I think that is a cool name. But unfortunately, they weren't the ones for me because there was Churro. And Churro City Football Club is in Cornwall. It is currently the highest ranked Cornwall team. Highest ranked Cornwall team. And they're in the seventh tier in real life. Seventh tier. Absolutely unbelievable that that is the highest ranked team from Cornwall. So I thought it would be rather good, rather cool, to build a massive Cornwall team. Build Chura City right up to the, the upper reaches of the Football League. And do it using only Youth Academy prospects. So that's what I've decided to do. So we went with Churro. And obviously from the media prediction that you just saw, it's not looking good. This is what do I, I had to work with. This is the team. 14, 14, 13 players. 13 players is all I have to work with. All I had to work with. So with these 13 players, we had to survive in the Vanarama National South until until we got some new players in. Because obviously we can't sign no one. This is a Youth Academy Challenge. We can't sign anyone. We needed to get to March or April, whichever one that the youth intake came in. We had to get to it. And we had to get to it with as little problems injury-wise as possible. And it was tough. Managing players' fatigue, like, it was really tough. We were fortunate in the sense of two things. We were taken over very early by a tycoon owner. I was like, this is fantastic. We have been taken over by somebody that's got money and that is going to invest money. I thought that's brilliant. I'm a little bit disappointed that my only takeover in the last couple of years has come in a youth academy challenge where I can't use youth players. A little disappointed in that. But what it does mean is that it gives me a jump, a head start, a jump forward. It means I can go pro. We went professional as soon as he took over. Thank you for that. It means we can upgrade our facilities. It means we can upgrade our junior coaching. It means we have a really good head start. The only thing I've got to do is survive the first season with these play these 13 players. And it's not the fact that these players are bad because they're not that bad, actually. These players are not that bad. The problem we have is, as you can see, we've got a 17-year-old here. 16-year-old, 16-year-old, 
16 year old. 16 year old in goal. <laughs> We've got a lot of youth players in and around the team because I made one of the biggest mistakes you can make when doing a youth challenge. And I did not realise that a lot of players were cut, their, their contracts were expiring. I didn't realise. Didn't even check. So when we came to the next season, and I was like, oh, I had 18 players. Why have I got 13 now? And it's because five of them had either retired or moved to another club. And I was like, oh, no. This is, this, this is going to make a really hard season. So the end of the first season, we finally got there. We did incredibly well. We finished in the league table. The playoffs are currently still going on. But we finished 15th. We had a very good end of season run which basically saved us. I think we had a, a run where we lost a load of games and we dipped into the relegation zone and the board basically said, look, we want to discuss your future. I was thinking, oh my days, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fail. We're going to have 13 players. I can't change nothing, but we're, we're going to fail in the first season and we had a takeover and everything. I thought, oh, this is awful. And then we went on and a really good... See, you can see here, look, this run is... Awful. And then we went on a bit of a run here. So I changed things around a little bit. I adjusted the 4 2 4 that I've been playing ever so slightly towards the end of the season. And as you can see, it gave us such a platform. We had a couple of rough March. But apart from that, we, we solidified our place in the Vanarama National League itself. And I am very happy with how we have done. Like I'm not happy about the blip. I am so happy at how we how we pulled it back. And we obviously finished on on uh, 64 points, 15th place. So we went for a 4-4-2. Originally, I played this formation very similar. I was look, looking for a bit of a stronger back line. But everything's pretty much the same. You know what I mean? But it just didn't seem to be doing it. Just didn't seem to be doing it. And like I said, these two, Okoro and Neil, they are really good players. They're incredibly fast. And they've got decent enough dribbling in this league. So I thought, you know what? Let's get them to cross from really close. Like, let's get them up here, crossing in. Up here, crossing in. As much as possible, you know what I mean? Get the ball crossing low, because let's be honest. If you look at Rooney, he's 5 foot 11. He's no 6 footer. He's not going to be out jumping some of them defenders. Sullivan, 5 foot 8. Definitely is not going to be out jumping any defenders. Especially with that jumping reach of three. So I thought, right, let's let's get it in low across the floor. Really get the ball skidding across that floor. And we'll just get these two to run at them all day. And just, these two are the main business makers. You know what I mean? Slightly higher tempo, so it's fast, a bit faster paced. Focus the play down both these sides. Just let these two do what they've got to do. You know what I mean? In transition, though, we weren't just hoofing it. You know what I mean? We were being very methodical with how we were playing. So we'd we'd get the ball and we'd take it to the centre backs. We'd go, look, you play with it. They are both ball playing defenders. They cannot play ball playing defenders. They are no good at it. You can see this one's seven and four and this one even worse, five and seven. And Will Dean who played most of the season, nine and seven. Not brilliant, but good enough for this level. And that's what you've got to remember. Like a ball playing defender Although it says he's low on passing, he's low on vision, remember what league you are in. Like if you've got two defenders that can play with the ball at their feet, even if it's not brilliantly, they're going to do bits that other teams just aren't even going to consider. They're not going to consider playing poor playing defenders. They don't think they're good enough. I don't think my players are good enough to be it. But, but just by telling them to play it and play it a bit more calmly, they seem they seem to do all right, and they 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 developed really well, and I, I like the way the play was the play built up. It was really nice. We've got the uh, wing backs on support, both of them being told to sit a bit more narrow. We want to invite crosses into the box. We've got we had big men. I mean, he's six foot three. He's five foot eleven. A bit different with lions, but Will Dean, five foot ten. That surprised me. I thought he was bigger than that. I can't remember how big uh, good old Ed Palmer was. I think he was over six foot. So we have big defenders, or at least relatively big defenders. So I wanted the balls being crossed in. I wanted, 
I didn't want to do this typical non-league thing where this non-league thing is just hit the ball long and us get absolutely obliterated by pacey players. But I wanted us to be very narrow so that if a ball cut does come over the top and these two aren't on the, aren't on the run already, then we have two wing-backs that are getting back in, in support enough to do it. <clears throat> to take the ball and stop any counters. It it works very well considering we are playing with a higher defensive line. And we're looking for Carsley just to thread the ball into these two. Play it along the floor, play it over the top, however it goes. These two winning the headers and whatever else. How he wins headers, I will never know. But he was winning headers all the time. He was picking the ball up in uh, to his feet. And it worked really well. And the reason I've gone with two advanced forwards. This is non-league. I could ask a player, Sullivan is probably better as a deep line forward. Let's be honest. He is probably better as a deep line forward. But at five for eight, he's not going to take any aerial balls. Not very easily anyway. He's not going to take any aerial balls. And while his passing and vision is really good, if he can't get onto the ball, he's not going to produce a pass to anything. And his only passing option, nine times out of ten, was the winger next to him, or the striker on this side of him. Two players. That's it. At least with the advanced forward role, he sits on that last defender. He causes a little bit of panic. Just five foot eight, Sullivan is causing panic just by sitting on that. They don't know he's not fast. He is slow. They don't know that. They just know that if he is sitting on the defender... He must be some a threat of some kind. And it proved it. He scored 24 goals. It proved that he was a threat. Rooney, on the other hand, a little bit quicker. He was definitely going to sit on the line. He was there to cause havoc. And he caused havoc. And that was the idea. It was basically get it out to the wings and get it crossed into the box. It's really low, really hard. And hope the acceleration of these two was enough just to nip ahead of the two defenders and put it in the back of the net. And it worked. Really well, several times. I can show you it working. If we look at, if we look at, where was one of the games that it happened? I think it was this one. Show you one we actually won in. So here is Daniel Sullivan, and the ball is being crossed by Okoro, I think. So you can see, Carsley picks it up, plays it into Okoro. Okoro goes down the line, stops, pulls it in, Sullivan there. Sullivan's acceleration was enough to get him ahead of that defender and to put it in the back of the net. That is what I was effectively looking at. Admittedly, Okoro was supposed to play that into Rooney, but I don't care as long as it goes in. You know what I mean? This That's how we were playing most of the season. These were the goals that I was aiming for. You could just have to look at who the assist maker was. Who provided the assist? Hemmings on the right-hand side into Harvey Carsley. Plays it over to Neil. Look, ball into the middle. Sullivan's there. Every time. Everything was being done down the by down the wing, and we were using the training properly. This is the schedule we were using, which is basically the Zealand schedule. Anyone that I think it's Zealand schedule. Anyone that watches Zealand will recognise this this training formation. The only thing we've changed is we're not attacking direct. We have changed that, and we're attacking wings. We play on the wings. This is how this team plays. It plays up the wings. So why would I go direct? When I haven't told my team to go very direct and I haven't told my team to be patient. There's no point playing these two when we're playing that. So we play attacking wings rather than attacking direct. And it works really well. You can see by the results, it works really well. The training made a massive difference when we swapped over to it in March. And the next thing you're probably wondering is, well, how did you how did your youth how did your youth intake go? Well, we were we were predicted a very good intake, an excellent intake. It was a golden generation, which I was very pleased about in the first season. You know what I mean? Golden generation in the first season. And look, there is no edit tab here. I have not done any editing. This is genuinely the players that came through. I uh, like because I I like I couldn't believe it. Like this is so far fetched this season. It's gone from being taken over by somebody that's investing money in the club to a golden generation youth intake. I was like, nobody's going to believe this because I don't believe this is happening to me right now. 
My mate has just started his youth academy, Chave. He's never played. He, this is probably his first proper FM in terms of how much he's going to actually put into it. And he's just started a youth academy cha- challenge with Churro because he got the same teams come up pretty much. And obviously he knew I was doing Churro, so he's doing Churro as well. He has not had a takeover. He is still semi-professional. But this is this is a couple of the players. We'll start in the under-21s because obviously most of them are not in the under-21s. They have been moved because either they have really high potential or I need them in the squad. I have 13 players and two of them aren't going to sign a contract. I can't get them to sign, which I am massively disappointed about because I'd love to keep both of them. These are these are the three that are in the under in the under twenty ones. You can see they're they're not really the highest rated players. I have um, put their little codes in, so it was year twenty four, and uh, where they came. Oh, that one's got a double. Uh, there's a double O down here. Let's change that nickname and put what is it? N O P. There's twenty four P. There we go. There we go. There he is. So these are the they, these are the lads that are still in the under twenty ones. They're they're not brilliant. They're never. I don't think these are ever gonna make it. I mean, this one might sit in the first team at some point, just as a chance of playing, and um, just simply because he's got a higher current ability than he has potential. Um, but yeah, these ones will probably never make it to the first team. Now, if we go into the squad, you can see I have a lot of players again now. I have. I have gone. I have gone from thirteen all the way up to twenty five people. I finally have my 25-man squad that I've been wanting. I am so happy about it. But I I, I am so happy. It, it, it eases the mind so much that I can actually rotate now. So we'll start with the main standout players. The ones that have done super this season. Andrew Neal. Big old Andy Neal. Didn't play much of the first part of the season at all. He was very much a bit part player. Made 14 sub appearances. He didn't really play that often. We had an injury to our youth player. Because we were giving our youth player more time, which, to be fair, was probably my part. I should have played this bloke from the start. So he got injured. So the bloke that was playing on the right-hand side, originally Akoro, 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 he was playing on the right-hand side, and this youth player was playing on the left. When this youth player got injured, I realised Akoro can play on the left. He's, but he can play with both feet. So I was like, right, I need somebody to fill in this winger spot. And here is Andy Neal. And he's relatively quick for for the for the, the league we're in. Thirteen and eleven, that's relatively quick. Can't really cross, but he's all I had, basically. So into the into the uh into the squad he goes, into the first team, plays on that right hand side. Our results picked up massively the minute I did that. The youth player, when he returned from injury, never made it back into the first eleven. And I should have done it from the start of the season. And it was, again, another blunder on my part because I wanted to play the youth players. I learnt. We changed. Andrew Neal now literally nailed down. Nailed down his starting spot by the end of the season. In that winger role on the right-hand side. The next big player for the team was Will Dean. Now, I know his uh, his recent form hasn't been great, but he's made 40 appearances, 6.94. He was an absolute rock at the back. We knew, we knew we could feel in the squad when Will Dean was not playing. We could feel it. We were so vulnerable without Will Dean. Unfortunately, as you can see, he won't sign a contract. Apparently, and he, I mean, he's not completely wrong. The Turo team is not good enough no more. But it's it's full of youth players, so so he doesn't want to sign with us. And you can see he is by far and above the best centre back. And I am very very disappointed that I can't sign him. Hopefully he stays and somebody doesn't pickpocket him, um, on a non contract sort of sort of way. But you can see every time I go into enter contract, he just does not want to sign. So that is disappointing. I really wish that uh, I could get him on to sign with us. Then we've got Tyler Harvey, our deep line playmaker. As you can see, average rating is through the roof. This bloke was incredible this season. Played a total of 46 matches. He played every league game he could. And he was a, he was superb. 
threading balls through. The key, like his key passes has got to be through the roof. He got twelve goals all on his own. Admittedly, most of them through penalties, but he got twelve goals on his own from a deep lying playmaker on defend role. Again, unfortunately, this is another player that is not wanting to sign. I have tried. He does not want to stay. We are going to lose him as well. And I am gutted that we are losing the other two players. But we are keeping two players that are pivotal to our squad. Pivotal. They were superb. And that is Lewis Rooney scoring 26 goals in 42 appearances with a 7.18 average rating. He was superb. And alongside him, Dan Sullivan. Playing as an advanced forward, believe it or not. He did the job as an advanced forward. Doesn't really have the stats for it in terms of pace and everything else. But he was superb as well. 24 goals from an XG of 15. He scored nine more goals than he was supposed to. He blew hot and cold, but he did the job. And I was very, very happy with his job, with, his, with what he did. Patrick Carsley played really well. He's gone up from a half-star rating to a two-star rating. And he's been playing out of his skin. He was one of the original regens that are in, in the squad from the very beginning. He did very well. And yeah, so that was they're the main lookers. And then obviously we had the youth guys come in. And you can see we've got quite a few in the squad already. So Anton Brownlee is probably one of our best prospects. I need to get his pace and acceleration up a little bit. But he is a very, very good centre-back. There is one centre-back I missed, and he's not here. And the reason he's not here is because he has now joined the the, the coaching staff. Uh, where is he? Ed Palmer. He had a superb season for us. 37 appearances, one goal, two assists. And he would come to me and was like, boss, I want to talk about contract and whatever else. And I went to offer him one, and it came up as coach. And I was like, well, coach is all right, I guess. So I brought him in. And then I realised I brought him in too early and we had to go the last few games without a centre-back to pair with Will Dean, who wasn't there either because he was injured, which meant Niall Lyons, a player that has been a very much bit part player of this season, has not played well any time I've played him, had to be in central central defence alongside another player and luckily, that was Anton Brownlee. He had come in in time. He was here. He was going to make the jump. And we, we put him straight in. We said, look, mate, go for it. Just do what you can. And as you can see, he played very, very well. 7.2. He had a rough game against Worthing. And an average game against Hemel Hempstead. But he played well against Dartford, uh, Dartford Villaricky and Dorchester. To make five appearances. And a 6.96 average rating. I was very happy with Anton Brownlee. There are also a couple of other players that are very interesting to look at. We have Jack Dave, Jake Davis. sorry, Not the best current ability at the moment. But a massive potential. And I, he's going to be our new deep line playmaker. If I can't get Tyler Harvey to sign a contract. Yes, I know he has a lot of stuff going that is in the wrong place for him. But he is the best one we've potentially got to put there. There is no one else that can play this role besides him. So, at the moment, he may be the one that's having to do it. And I'm hoping to improve this intelligence and low determination. He is going to be one that's going to be getting fined quite often. Because I, I found that sort of helps in improving their determination. But the biggest one, the biggest one that we have to look for is Connell Dick. <laughs> A brilliant name, Connell Dick. He will be a right winger on support. We've got to get his acceleration and pace up a little bit, but look at this. Teamwork, work rate. It's all super bravery, aggression. He is currently a two-star player already. He is our best prospect that's come through the youth team. Our best prospect. He is the highest rated prospect to come through the team. So this is Danny. This is Danny Reeve. He was one Y two four B. Again, he's starting to look a little bit worse than uh, than what he what he was uh, potentially meant to be. Kalen Willits. We had no goalkeeper. We've now got a backup goalkeeper. He's not the best. 
he probably will never play very much for the club. Um, Ollie Bryce, although although Ollie Bryce is very inconsistent, and honestly, no, like, I've sent my mate videos that I've recorded with my phone because I have <laughs> of this man making the worst blunders I have ever seen, and he frustrates me so much. <laughs> but he has that massive potential, so. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to oust him from the goalkeeping just yet. If he gets if he doesn't do very well next season, Kalen will be coming in and Kalen will be taking over after he's had a couple of years of training. I think Kalen will be better than Ollie anyway. So that's effectively the team at the moment. We will next season go through more of the players that have come through, the new players that have come through. I'm only going to do this one video a week maybe just to, just the season. Maybe two videos a week, depending on how fast I can get through. But obviously, I've got other stuff I've got to down. Uh, I've got to play and upload and whatever else. I mean, it's gonna. It, it was a hard challenge this year. It was hard to play the league with thirteen players and only play the league with thirteen players. It was incredibly hard. And those last couple of couple of games where we had the youth players that come in, oh, it was so nice having that 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 rotation option and whatever else. That was that was incredible. It felt good to feel like that. I don't know whether anyone else has actually survived with 13 players for the entire season. But if they have, fair play to you, because it is hard. It is really hard. Like I said, the next episode will be uh, later this week or at the start of next week. It won't be like tomorrow or anything like that. Don't expect an episode tomorrow. That is going to end today's video. If you have enjoyed it, please drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will see you for the next one very soon. Thanks for watching.